I love to keep track of any new book I run across. I, I, I like to know who recommended it to me, where I heard about it from, and whether or not I should read it. So that when I come back to it at a later date, if I do decide to read it, I will have these little breadcrumbs telling me who recommended it to me, where I heard about it, all these sorts of things. It's also fun to look back on the past couple years and see what I read over that time period, as well as knowing what I should read in the future, what books I have already saved that I want to get read. Last week I shared with you all the 22 books that I plan on reading in 2022, and I promised you that this week I will be sharing with you how I'm keeping track of those books, as well as just how I keep track of books in general in Rome Research. I've already mentioned Rome a couple times in previous videos. It's an application that I use for almost everything on a daily basis, and so it makes sense for me to put the books I want to read as well as the books I'm reading in Rome. I mean, everything else is there, so why not just tack on books as well? But you see, it's not just tacking on. There is a huge benefit to adding these into Rome versus a service like Goodreads. Over the past couple years, I've been increasingly dissatisfied with Goodreads. Sure, there is the social benefit, which is wonderful. Many of the books that I have on my reading list for this year were direct recommendations from friends on Goodreads. But there are some frustrations with it too. One, it's really hard to keep track of how I first heard of a book. Sure, I can add a book to my want to read list, but when I come back to it a year later, I don't really know what inspired me to add it to that list in the first place. Two, the Kindle and Audible integration is just junk. A lot of times I'll open up the Kindle app and scroll to a passage just to look at it for reference, and then suddenly Goodreads thinks I'm halfway through the book. And three, I, I'm not in Goodreads on a daily basis, and so oftentimes I'll forget to mark a book as started or as finished. This is not true of Rome, which I'm in every single day. As I said, this video is all about how I implement my book tracking system in Rome, and as such, we're gonna do something a bit different in this video. We're gonna hop over to the computer and we are gonna go through this kind of tutorial style. I mean, it makes more sense to talk about this while you can actually see a simplified version of my Rome graph versus me just kind of waving my hands around in the air. So let's jump over to the computer. I'm hoping this will make sense to you, but in general, when I'm tracking books in Rome research, there are three steps to it. First is when I come across a new book. Anytime I come across a new book or actually a podcast or a video or anything I want to consume, I'll add it to my daily notes page. If you're new to Rome research, every single date gets a daily note page. As you see here, this is today's daily note page. If that book or podcast or whatever is something that I'm seriously interested in reading, I'll add a tag to it, such as to read, to watch, or to listen. Otherwise, if it's just something mentioned in passing but I'm not really interested in reading it yet, I'll just note it down, and if it comes up as a recommendation from someone else later on, and that piques my interest even more, I'll add the tag at that point. So let's dive into a demo about a specific book. Now you'll notice here underneath the demo I have three dates listed. This is meant to simulate the Daily Notes page. In general, I wouldn't write like this, it would just be top level on the Daily Note page, but just to keep it all in one location and make it easier for you to follow along, I'm doing it this way for this tutorial. All of my notes start with a timestamp. In Rome, that's pretty easy to do. You can just do forward slash current time. So last year during MythMoo 8, we had a meet and greet Zoom call. In the Zoom call, someone mentioned the book Range by David Epstein, and it kind of piqued my curiosity as something that I might be interested in reading at a future time. Given that, I take a note something like this. So we were having a general call talking about just wide ranges of interest and someone mentioned the book range. So here I've added square brackets around the book title and that is just to tell Rome to treat it as a page. You'll also notice that I have a prefix here, book slash range, and that is just a prefix or a namespace for my own convenience to make it easy to find all books. Also, I've added some custom stylizing to make a pretty book icon appear every time I talk about a book. At this point, I wasn't sure I wanted to read range, and so I didn't tag it with anything, I just noted the book there. This way, if I ever did come across range in the future, I would know the first time I heard about it. So fast forward a couple months, and I was in a part-time YouTuber Academy call with Thomas Frank as a guest speaker, and he also mentioned range. Now I knew at this point that I had heard about range before, so if I go to the book page, I would see that, oh, hey, it was mentioned by someone else previously. Okay, so at this point, it has piqued my interest enough that I, I think I want to add it to my to-read list. So I just add that to-read tag. Later on, I heard range one more time. This time it wasn't so much a recommendation as kind of 
a diss recommendation. Christo just didn't seem to see the point of range or didn't agree with the argument that Dave Epstein was making. Now, I still added this here. This way, when I finally get to reading range, I will have a notation of all of the places that I heard about it, both positive and negative. There are two really important things that have happened here. Firstly, I've linked to the range book page every time someone has mentioned it. This way I can access all my interactions with people who have talked about range in one location. And two, when I finally decide this is a book that I do want to read, I've added the to read tag. This means that whenever I'm looking to read a book, I can just go to the to read page and see all the books I want to read. Now I've cleaned this up a bit, but you'll see that range appears here. So does Miyazaki World, Starting Point, Turning Point, and a couple of other things. So when it came time to create my 22 books for 2022, I could just keep this page opened here and open up my 2022 reading list in the sidebar and add books to that directly. Now let's go back to the daily note page and talk about step two, which is when I want to start a book. Starting a book is pretty easy. All I do is on the daily note page, add the current time as this timestamp and just say, hey, I'm starting to read range. That's it, no tags, nothing. I care enough about starting to read a book that I wanna keep track of it, but I don't want any special tags or anything like that cluttering up my database. It's just there. I care more about actually finishing the book. Which brings us to step three, finishing the book. It's very similar to starting the book. I have the current timestamp, and just say that I finished the book. But this time I do add a special tag, and that is did read. Now you'll notice I do have corresponding tags for watch, listen, and read. To read, did read. To watch, did watch. To listen, did listen. I went through a couple of things that I could have used. I watched, I listened, I read, read. I ended up settling on this pairing because I figured it wouldn't be in use anywhere else and so that would keep these tags pretty much isolated for this specific purpose. The final step after I finish reading the book is to go back and change the initial to read tag because I've read the book, I don't want it appearing in the to read page anymore. Now in this simplified demo, I could easily just scroll up here and change it here, but I wanna show you how I would do this in practice. To do this, I would go to the range page and scroll down to where it appears under to read, and I would just change this to to read done. The reason I don't just delete the tag is because I do want that reference point of where I initially decided that I'm gonna read this book but I don't want it left in the to read page database because at some point in the future, I may decide I want to read range again, and then I will create a new listing in my daily note page with to read tag there. This system has three huge benefits for me. One is that I now have a single page I can go to anytime I want to look through all the books I want to read. And that of course is my to read page. So if I'm looking for a new book, I can just go here and grab it. The next major benefit is that I have a did read page, which lists everything, including the date on which I finished reading them. You can notice from this page that I've been reading the Brockman manga lately. And then the final huge benefit is that if I go to the book page itself, I can see a complete history of all the times the book was recommended, as well as my interactions with the book. Because as I'm reading through the book, I can take notes on the book in the same way. And then as I said, all these notes and my history of interactions with the book are all on the linked reference page of the book itself. So that's it for my first Roam tutorial. I hope you were able to follow along. I'd be really curious if any of you are using Roam to keep track of what you are reading. And if you're not, what systems are you using? Please leave them in the comments down below. And then I guess till next time, bye. I love keeping track of new, I love keeping tracks I love keeping track of, I love keeping track. So that when I finally get to reading the book, I can know who, why am I saying the same thing twice? Okay. <laughs>